Are you wanting to mix farmhouse and cottage styles or are you wanting to move away from the farmhouse style and into a cottage style in your home? You're stumped on where to start, you don't want to waste money, or end up with decor that doesn't work. Today we'll discuss different economical ways to ease into another style smoothly while learning new ways to look at home decor. Good morning, friend. If you're new, I'm Rachel from the blog StoneCottageHome.com, where we cultivate the art of home. Today, I will share with you my three tips for transitioning smoothly from one style to another. Stick around to the end of the video, where I will also share with you some of my favorite inspiration sources for cottage style home decor. My first tip for you is to start small. Look around in your spaces and identify the common items that you see in every room for this style, such as a neutral or all white color palette, signs, and decor purchased from a big box store that lacks any kind of originality. Decor is an easy place to start. The items are small. And if you're a thrifter, you can obtain them at good prices. For example, art, lamps, and cushions are common English cottage elements. You can introduce personality, color, and cottage style on a dime. Through art, you could express personality with a gallery wall. And with lamps and pillows, there's the delightful fun of mixing patterns. Most of these cushions are feather filled. All of them were under $5. And I would encourage you when gathering your collection to consider a unified color palette. My second tip for you is to consider color. In this world of fun, there are many options. Choosing a limited color palette will immediately look more designed. These two sitting rooms demonstrate a smooth transition into cottage style with neutral backdrops and delicate touches of color. Taking the leap from an all-white space to one of color can be confusing, bewildering, and scary. Ease into color with calm neutrals and soft, grayed-out colors. This sagey gray-green is pleasant, and this soft yellow is cheerful without being electric. Here are the colors that we have used in our home so far. The ivory lace is a wonderful alternative to white. The universal khaki is one of those sophisticated grayed out colors. And the green has become one of my all time favorites. It is reminiscent of a vintage green used in the 1920s and 30s. Now that we've chosen our neutrals and my glorious green, it's time to find a good blue. As these are all colors that work well together in nature, they also work well together in a home. And you can mix and match them and bring out more of one color in a particular space and more of another color in a different space. I encourage you to give this idea a thought. One resource you might consider for very good cottage colors is Andrea's home on the YouTube channel Pine and Prospect Home. Here you see she's written a blog post and she has several videos talking all about choosing whites and neutrals. The world of color is big. Would any of you be interested in a video specifically dedicated to cottage colors? My third tip for you would be to slow down and enjoy the journey. When you say a home collected over time, that's just it. It takes time. If you are to look at any one of these inspiration pictures and take apart all of the pieces that make up the whole, that's quite a few pieces. And it takes time to find the pieces that are the right size, color, style, and function for your home. 
One of the most emphasized tips from British designer Rita Koenig is buy well, buy slowly. By buying slowly, you have time to live in your home, to enjoy your home, and get to know what works for you, plus what wonderful opportunities to make memories. As you pick up something with your husband at that estate sale or with a friend at that antique fair, this autumn tea tray created last season was bought slowly over time. The green tea tin was given to me for Christmas years ago by my aunt. The rest was thrifted or antiqued over the last two or three years. This new way of looking at home decor is quite a shift in mindset. Going from buying whatever the new seasonal items are in your favorite big box stores to looking for particular items that suit your style, that are the right color, size, and function for your unique home is such a thrill. According to British designer Penny Morrison, one of the greatest compliments you could receive is for someone to say, where did you get that? Instead of, oh, I know where you got that and that, you have truly created at this point your own personal unique home. You may find yourself scouring Craigslist for a vintage trunk, making your own pleated lampshades out of a favorite fabric, or dipping your toe into the wonderful ocean of DIY projects. As in any journey, there are ups and downs. Some projects and ideas won't work, but you will learn a lot about yourself, your family, your home, and the way you live. As promised, let's look at some of my favorite sources for design inspiration. There are a number of designers I find inspiring, but these three happen to be ones I refer to continually. Penny Morrison has her own fabric and lampshade company and uses color with abandon. I especially love this pink drawing room on the right here. What a beautiful setting. As Mrs. Morrison travels internationally, her inspiration comes from around the world and it gives a global, quintessentially English look to her designs. She can be found on Instagram. I have become well acquainted with British designer Rita Koenig over the last year via her video lessons in interior design course that Matt gave me for my birthday. She is an expert at bringing refined, relaxed comfort to a home and is passionate about sharing her expertise and empowering people to decorate and design their homes themselves. Her effortless style and her writings have become a staple of Vogue, the New York Times, House and Garden, and the Wall Street Journal. She can be found at Rita.com and on Instagram. As a direct influence of Rita Koenig, I have picked up unique lamps over the last several years at thrift stores and antique shops, then taught myself how to make my own pleated lampshades like Penny Morrison offers. I do have a video on that if you're interested. Also inspired by Rita Koenig's salon style gallery wall, I have put artwork up all over the house. She has taught me many ways of balancing scale, color, and pattern through her video courses. On the home front, I have enjoyed learning from Marion Parsons, also known as Miss Mustard Seed. She is a prolific writer on her blog, MissMustardSeed.com. Her new book, Feels Like Home, is a wonderful resource of interior design and DIY projects. Marion has created a design style bespoke to her own taste, despite the fact that she lives in an ordinary suburban home like the rest of us. Plus, she uses the gorgeous vintage green, blues, and neutral colors that Matt and I both prefer in our home. Last summer, before we settled on the color palette for our home, I decided to take some inspiration from Miss Mustard Seed and do an entire hutch based on the colors of blue and green, just to see how well they mix together. Matt and I both loved how it turned out. This experiment alone helped us to decide for sure what colors we wanted to use for our home. 
Friend, you might try something like this to help you with a color palette in a living room, a bathroom, or your entire home. If cottage colors fascinate you and you'd like to see a video, please leave your questions and comments below. Friend, if you are inspired or learned something new, please subscribe and leave your thoughts on what you found to be most helpful or inspiring. I'm already looking forward to our next visit. Until then, thank you for coming along and take care.